Hello girls and boys, welcome to Elementor Tips and Tricks video clips. This time we'll talk about shape dividers in Elementor, how to use or create custom ones, how to place them to any side, and how to custom shape divide columns, not only sections. Until this day, it's only possible to use Elementor's ready-made shape dividers and there's like 18 of them. These shape dividers can only be applied to sections. Moreover, usage is limited to top and bottom of the section only. If you ever use shape dividers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. However, what if I want to use my own shape divider, a custom one? What if I want to use shape divider for the purpose of separating two columns like these two here? By default, that's not possible. But luckily, Elementor as a system has been created to accommodate a broad range of so-called special cases. Here I have two image boxes that use Elementor's default shape dividers. I made these two for the demonstration purpose just to pay your attention to before mentioned limitations. Because Elementor shape divider are limited to section only, I have created two sections image box. Section with image on top and the, and the text box section in bottom. In order to be able to actually apply shape divider between these two, okay, that's why. In one of my previous videos, I talk about overlapping rows in Elementor and in case you don't know how to make multiple sections per column, you can find a link to that video in the description below. My first image box has a shape divider zigzag, as you can see, applied to the image section to the bottom of image section. Second image box uses triangle, also applied to the bottom of the image section. However, there's no way to apply shape divider to column. That's why I'm about to work around that, that problem in Elementor today. Let's take a look at my horizontal image box example about these two. Shape divider is used to separate two columns here. Beside, it's a custom made shape divider. There's no such shape divider in Elementor's library. Of course, responsiveness is the most important. So if I switch viewport size to tablet first, you can see it plays nice, just like default shape dividers. Now if I switch to mobile, uh, because columns get collapsed, my custom shape divider has to switch the side too, from right hand side to bottom, which works just fine as you can see, so it's possible. Okay, uh, I'm about to show you two different methods of applying custom shape dividers. Both methods allow application of dividers to any side of the column, be it top, right, bottom or left hand side. All you gotta do is to create your own shape divider file and get it to any side of the column. Position of a custom shape divider is controlled by background position property, you're gonna see later. Uh, the first method is very simple, it doesn't even require Elementor Pro. The second method is way harder, there's a custom CSS code involved. And I have to be honest and say that the second method allows just a tiny little bit more flexibility. Is it worth the effort? Well, you're gonna be the one who's judging at the end. I'm here to supply you with options and informations. So you'll simply use the method that you feel most comfortable with. First, I'll create new section atop of the existing one. I'm gonna click that plus icon. So new section shows up. Next, I'm gonna drag and drop inner section onto the section. Uh, I will need some margin uh, on top and bottom of my outer section. Click that grip icon in order to highlight it. Uh, select advanced tab and enter, I don't know, 100 pixels margin to top and bottom. That's because I want to add some space on top of my future image box. No big deal here. Next, I got to remove columns gap too, because by default there's a gap between these two columns. Otherwise, there will be space between image and text box, which is something I don't want. So click the grip icon of the intersection widget to highlight it, select layout tab, already selected. And from the columns gap drop down, select no gap. That's how we get rid of the, the gap between two columns. Let's add the image to the first column now. Uh, I'm not going to use image widget because image widget doesn't actually allow the image to stretch vertically. So in case my text box height exceeds image height, 
there will be a gap below image. I need a compact image box, all right? Uh, in order to make image and text box heights match, so to speak, I'll have to set the image as a column background instead. So highlight the column by clicking on the column icon, open style tab, background panel, uh, background type will be classic, and by clicking on an image, you are able to select image from media library. Uh, that's gonna be my image. Insert, position uh, center, center, repeat, no repeat, and size will be cover. Column background image will not be rendered or visible unless there's some content inside that very column. An easiest way to fix that is to simply drag and drop spacer widget to the target column. That's what I did right now. Image size is controllable by using column padding. However, if I add some content to the right hand side column, this one's going to grow correspondingly. You'll see what I'm talking about soon. Now, I'm not going to create my text box, my second column uh, from scratch because it'll take too much time. I'll rather copy paste entire column from my below example. So right mouse click on a column icon, uh, select copy. Now right mouse click on a column icon of the work in progress text box and simply paste. We have one column extra here that we want to get rid of. So right mouse click on a column icon and delete. Now we are ready to add our custom shape divider. So highlight the column that, that houses our image. Uh, open style tab, already opened. And expand background overlay panel. Background type will be classic. And now I'm going to pick my custom shape divider from media library. That's the one. I have already created and imported to media library my SVG files that's gonna be used as a custom shape divider. Uh, why SVG file? Because it's a vector file, it supports transparency, it doesn't lose quality even if scaled indefinitely, and the file size is extremely small. As you can see, it's only one kilobyte, that small. PNG file can also be used as an alternative, but I strongly recommend SVG. Uh, you can see more than just one file, just one variation of the file being uploaded. And I'm going, I'm about to explain why exactly in just a few minutes, so be patient for a while. Insert media, uh, position will be top right, repeat, no repeat, and size will be contained this time because divider should fit container size vertically, okay? And opacity, of course, eliminate any opacity. Let's check responsiveness now, okay? I'm gonna click on responsive mode button. Select tablet first. It looks fine. Now, mobile. And it doesn't look right anymore because our columns are now collapsed, one below another, as you can see. Image column height is reduced to the height of the spacer widget inside. And my custom shape divider is still on the right-hand side. It's hardly visible because it, it became as tall as the spacer widget, that's why. Let's fix all of that. With mobile mo mode selected or active, highlight column image, uh, image uh, column, sorry. Uh, select advanced tab, open advanced panel, uh, unlink padding values, uh, select percentage as a unit, then add 30 percent padding to top and 30 to bottom. That's how we fix the, the, the small size image problem. Now open style tab, expand background overlay panel and simply pick new image from media library. That's the one we're going to use for mobile version. As I said, you're going to find out why there's more than just one variation of shape divider in media library. Well, it's because we need vertical and horizontal image is due to the fact that columns get collapsed for mobile devices and different orientation of shape divider is needed. Insert, uh, position will now be bottom left. Bottom left and you can leave everything else as is. Alrighty. I guess our custom shape divider is finished. The most likely 
you now think that it's too simple to be true. Otherwise, I wouldn't be mentioning two different methods at the beginning, right? So, there's actually a minor drawback to this method. And the drawback is that you have no control over the shape divider color. The only way to change the color is to open your SVG file, change color, resave the file, then re-upload to media library. For instance, if I change the background color of my text box, let's pick my favorite color, which is uh, 3F458E. All right. Uh, my shape divider doesn't make sense anymore because of different color. It's of different color. So I'll have to pick another set of vertical and horizontal version of the custom shape divider from media library in order to make it match my new text box background color, of course. Highlight the, the image column, open style tab and background overlay already opened. Pick different color uh, shape divider now. Insert, all right. Switch to mobile mode and pick horizontal version. There it is. And that's the drawback. If you are okay with it, no need to continue watching this tutorial. Things gonna become a little bit tricky. A little bit tricky only because I wanted to find a way to eliminate the drawback and be able to change the color of my SVG file within Elementor. With no uploads, re-uploads, whatever. Besides, from now on, you're gonna need Elementor Pro. In order to save a bunch of time, I'll simply duplicate the entire section I created here. So right mouse click on the section grip icon, the outermost section icon, duplicate. Alright, here is my duplicated section. Next I'll have to remove shape dividers I added earlier. So highlight the image column by clicking on the column icon, style tab, background overlay panel, delete background and unset background type. I'm doing that because that's going to remove all background images including the one I set for mobile devices. We can do a quick check if you want just to be sure. Mobile, yep, it's all clear. With image column highlighted, I'm going to open advanced tab and expand custom CSS panel because we are about to add a custom CSS code. First of all, you must be aware that we still gonna need vertical and horizontal version of our custom shape divider even though I remove them. We'll just set them up different way via CSS. So let's go step by step. Everything will make sense and fall into place at the end. So no worries. First, instead of letting Elementor do the image switch for our for mobile device, we'll do it on our own by using CSS media queries. What is media query? Essentially, media query is some sort of the clause according to which browser knows how to render certain class or element or element with a class at a certain screen resolution. These are also known as breakpoints. So we will need two media queries or two breakpoints. One for the resolution 768 pixels and above and the other one for any other resolution below 768 pixels. I'll do that by, by typing the following into my custom CSS panel. So here's my first media query. Add media, then space, open close brackets and a pair of curly brackets for later usage. And I'm going to type in min width 768 pixels. What it means? It actually tells browser to execute and stick to this chunk of CSS code as long as screen resolution is 768 pixels or greater. Browsers are aware of the current resolution or screen size. Next one, at media, uh, curly brackets, and this time I'm gonna type in max width 767 pixels. What it means? Again, it tells browser to execute and stick to this chunk of CSS code as long as screen resolution is 767 pixels or less. Now, before I made this tutorial, I tried many different methods of adding shape divider to column via CSS and trust me, the following will work best. 
So the method itself includes the usage of pseudo element named before. There are two content related pseudo elements before and after. And these are able to add content before or after the element that they are attached to, so to speak. In this case, we are going to add our shape divider as the background image of pseudo element. I hope it makes sense just a little bit. If not, just keep watching. First, I'm going to enter keyword selector. What is selector? Selector is a shortcut. Instead of typing in a bunch of classes to access the target element, our column with background image, we simply use selector and Elementor will know exactly what element we are referring to. After selector, I'm going to add column and type before. That's how I define my pseudo element. You can think of it as an abstract layer with no position, size, content, nothing. So we are about to shape it up. First thing we gotta define is the content property, which is mandatory. And I'm gonna just type in double quotes, open, close, double quotes, and nothing in between. That will be enough. Position is going to be absolute uh, with 100%, 100%, 100% of the parent container, which is the column with, with background image. Height is going to be 100% as well. The most important background image, URL. I'm gonna leave it empty. This one is some kind of a special case and requires detailed explanation. That's why it's gonna be empty for a while. Next, background repeat, no repeat, we don't re need repeatable background. Background position is going to be 100% zero. Why? Uh, it's because we need our shape divider to be 100% on the right hand side and zero pixels on top. And finally, very important, Z index, Z index. I'll just type in one. We are dealing with absolutely positioned pseudo element that has to be placed on a top of our of our uh, column, which is the column with that has a background image. And Z index will make our pseudo element render on top of the parent element. That's why I'm using it. Without it, it will not work. Without it, our pseudo element will be placed below or behind our, our behind the parent container, okay? Next, I'm just gonna copy paste everything to my second media query with one little exception. And the exception is background position. Oh, I forgot to add percentage. And the exception is that the background position is going to be zero 100% instead of 100% zero. Uh, that will make our shape divider image to start from zero on the left hand side and stick to the very bottom, which is actually position of shape divider for mobile devices. Now the trickiest part is yet to come. How to set SVG file as a background image. If you didn't know, background image CSS property allows you to include the resource two ways. First one is to provide URL of the, of the image which represents physical location of the file somewhere on a server. And that's something we are not going to use. Second one is so-called data URI, which is actually encoded string that represents the file itself. Or otherwise, if you provide the contents of a file as the string, you can literally embed the data within CSS code, within our background image URL. Right? And when it's time for browser to render data URI string, it'll simply decode string and reconstruct the original file, something like reverse engineering. So the big question is how to properly encode our custom shape divider image to be used as data URI resource. Believe it or not, SVG file is nothing but an XML file having a different extension. You can open any SVG file with any text editor. I'm a big fan of Visual Studio Code, which is the best free open source code editor ever. 
So I'm simply going to open my two custom shape divider images in Visual Studio Code. Open. All right. These are my shape dividers and open. As you can see, that's pretty much standard XML file. However, or luckily, we don't need everything from here. We only need SVG part, which starts, starts from here. So I'm gonna strip it down and make required code as simple as possible. I can remove XML file declaration and document type. And we can now clean up unwanted attributes from our SVG tag. Basically, we can delete everything but view box. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Delete everything but view box attribute. Okay, style, delete. View box attribute represents my SVG document size. I'm using 200 by 500 pixels and 500 by 200 pixels document size for vertical and horizontal version of the file respectively. Your own SVG file might have different values. Don't change them. That's the point. Don't change anything related to view box. Just leave intact whatever is in there. Now, the only thing that I'm going to add is the fill attribute. Remember that attribute for later, please. It's supposed to store the color information and nothing I do here will make any sense without it. Believe it or not. That's why it's, it's super, super important. Fill equals, and you can enter any color you like because we're gonna be able to change the color, the, the information you put here within Elementor. So I'm gonna just type in my favorite color, which is 3F458E. All right, let's handle the horizontal version of our shape divider. There's a chance that your own SVG file source code doesn't look exactly as mine, but that's okay. It's up to the application that the file was generated by. So if you just stick to my instructions and end up with something like you can see on the screen right now, you're gonna be fine. All is going to be just fine. If you wonder what's, what's all that code here, well, that's just how SVG file is described, so to speak. We are dealing with a vector file, a bunch of commands and coordinates that are used to draw our bunch of triangles. That's what it is. Simpler SVG file like square or circle uses way less code. More complex SVG might look, it might look even worse. But that's definitely nothing you should be concerned of, it's just the way things work. All you gotta know is how to copy paste. All right. Now that we have clean versions of both files, vertical and horizontal, we have to encode them. Why? Because they have to become a valid data URI resource, something that browsers can understand and interpret. So how do I encode these two files properly? I'll open Google and I'm gonna enter URL encoder for SVG. All right, and there it is, the first one on the list. As you can see, it reads, insert your SVG. Let's get back to Visual Studio and copy all the code for our vertical shape divider first. Now go back to URL encoder and paste. As you can see in preview, our SVG file looks just nice. But what, do, what we actually need from here is ready for CSS part. So I'll just copy or cut everything between URL brackets, including double quotes, okay? And cut. Now go back to, my, to Elementor and paste between my own background image URL. There it is, our shape divider, described as a bunch of ugly code. Okay, let's do the same for the, the horizontal version. Select O, copy, go back to URL encoder, clean it up, and paste. There it is, horizontal version. 
now select all and cut now go back to Elementor and paste into my second media query as a background image URL data URI okay paste here it is that should be it let's check responsiveness responsive mode tablet it all looks fine now the mobile perfect it's all good long way to get to the point right but what is the point what's the advantage as I said earlier you are the one to judge here this method allows you to change background color of our custom shape divider image without any additional uploads how here's the catch find the word fill remember that fill attribute that we added a while ago to our SVG tag that's the one we're looking for here because there's our color okay so find the word fill which is here you can even use command com, command F or uh, control plus F I think it's for Windows as I recall so it's a keyboard combo in order to open find replace tool for Elementor's custom CSS panel and you can do you can find the fill attribute by typing fill all right there it is it doesn't work that great but anyhow after fill you can see equal sign uh, single quote then percentage 23 percentage 23 is how our hashtag gets encoded okay everything after percentage 23 and before the closing single quote is the hexadecimal representation of the color itself now if I want to use black color of my custom shape divider I would enter six zeros after percentage 23 one two three four five six there you go don't forget to do the same for the horizontal version or for mobile version like this one two three four five six there it is let's now change the background color of of the text box style let it be black in order to match the, the color of the shape divider and there it is that's how you change the color all the effort because of that little piece of hexadecimal code that can be updated at will does it make sense now was it worth the effort feel free to let me know what you think in comment section below and that's gonna be it for today girls and boys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did give me a thumb up subscribe share comment if you do I'll make more elementary tips and tricks videos stay tuned